These four buttons on the top of the Xbox controller can develop a variety of issues for a variety of reasons. Most of these issues are listed on the screen right here. It's very possible that you can fix the buttons on your own, even if you know nothing about electronics. I'm going to show you eight things you can attempt, starting with simple things that don't involve opening up the controllers, and then I'll move on to more complex things that do. Start at solution one and continue onward until the problem is fixed or you reach the end of your comfort level. Each method builds on the previous method, so that's another reason to do them in order. The things I show should in principle apply to all modern Xbox controllers. I'll be working on two different ones in the video. One is from the Xbox One era, and the other one is a Generation 1 Series X controller. For method one, grab some thin cardboard from a consumer product and make a blade out of it. Then run it through the gaps around whatever button is giving you the issue. The idea is to scrape out any debris that has built up in those gaps. Press the button up and down as you do this. Some spots may be too tight to run the cardboard through. If the cardboard starts to come apart, replace it. You don't want pieces of it to get down into those gaps. To get into the rounded gaps, curve the blade like so. Once you've done all that, make another pass, but this time wet the cardboard, preferably with alcohol. I'm using isopropyl, which is what I recommend, but you can use water if you want. If the cardboard gets too soggy, make another blade. Once again, you don't want a piece to fall out and get into the gaps. If a piece does get inside, just keep watching this video until I get to the parts where I show how to take apart the controller. The second method is to get a vacuum cleaner and use the attachment hose to suction the gaps around the problematic button. This is a good follow-up to the first method because you may have dislodged some dirt and this will hopefully suck it out. Get used to cupping your hands to increase the suction power. Be sure to press the buttons down as you do this and also press the like button on this video if you're getting a lot out of it. The third method is the opposite of the second method. Instead of sucking on the gaps around the button, we're going to blow into them. You can use a straw, you can use canned air, you can use an electric duster. I have one to recommend and I'll put a link to it in the description. Some people will actually place their mouths on these gaps and blow in it that way. You can also use a hairdryer on the cool setting. The straw is usually the most effective, but if you don't have a straw, you can always make your own by rolling up a piece of paper. Make sure you're pressing the buttons up and down as you do this. The idea around the first three methods is that dirt gets in around these buttons and causes them to not function properly. It's one of the most common reasons why it happens, and that's why we're spending so much time doing these cleanings. Method four is not a cleaning method, and it's a long shot. Update the firmware on your controller. Sometimes these updates help resolve some of the issues that happen to these buttons. You can do it through an Xbox system, but first download any firmware updates that are available for the Xbox itself then go to settings then devices and connections accessories find a picture of your controller on the screen and click the three dots underneath it if an update is available this box will say update now go ahead and run it if it does if you don't have an Xbox you can also update the firmware using the Xbox accessories app on a PC. It's a free app. You download it, you connect your controller to the PC, and then once you start using it, you'll get the same screen with a picture of your controller, and you have the three dots, and you can click those and run the update if there's one available. If none of the first four methods worked, it's time to start taking things apart. And this is where I'll warn you, anytime you're taking anything apart, there's a risk that you might break it. There's a lot of little parts inside. I'm going to do everything I can to guide you through it as carefully as possible but the risk will never be 0% no matter how good I am at describing it. So just be aware of this fact. I also recommend that you don't do these methods in real time as I do them. Instead, watch the entire segments and watch me describe the process and show what tools you need before you attempt to do it on your own. The first thing we're going to do is remove the grips that are on the handles of the controller. It's a big piece. It kind of resembles a banana peel and it's on those handles very tightly. You need to pull it off in this direction like this. The best way to do it is to press the trigger button down and then jam something up in that gap next to where the trigger button is and then just pull straight out. I like to take a screwdriver and pop it out 
try not to touch the trigger button itself. It's made out of a very soft plastic, and if you stick a screwdriver in there and pry up against the button itself, you're going to scar it, which is what has happened to this button right here. I've gone into this controller many times in the past. So put all the force on the plastic piece itself, the piece you're trying to remove. It may feel like it's never going to come off, but it will eventually. If you have a prying tool, you can start prying it away to loosen it up, but normally the prying tools are not strong enough to pop the whole thing off. At some point, you will have to yank on that gap. If you're really strong, you might be able to jam your fingers in there and take it out like that, but if it doesn't budge, you're going to damage your fingers. Okay, so with these grips removed, you now have better access to these buttons up here, at least to the trigger buttons. So with those covers off, you can now proceed with this method, which is to clean in the openings that are now exposed around the four buttons. You just have a lot better access, so there's a lot more room in there. At this point, I just recommend blowing into the gaps there to clean them. You can also use a Q-tip to clean them as well. If you see a lot of residue, you can take a Q-tip and dip it in alcohol and clean up the area. Now we're going to go deeper into the controller. We're going to unscrew five different screws. You'll need a Torx head screwdriver, and I was able to get the screws to turn with three different sizes, so I'll put those on the screen right here. If a screw feels like it doesn't want to move, don't proceed. You'll end up stripping it. Instead, drop one drop of water on it and also scrape out any gunk that's around the screw and also tap on it. Hopefully with those three things you can loosen it. Do not worry, one drop of water is not going to ruin your controller. Then with the buttons facing down, take the back cover off the controller. Here's what my two controllers look like at this point. The method we are doing here is an inspection. Let me first talk about how these trigger buttons work. As you're pressing them down, you'll see that the end of the plastic taps the back of the circuit board like this. And at the same time, the button also strikes a pad that's on the back cover. I need to put the back cover back on in order to show you. There's this little sliver of plastic that's a different consistency from the rest of the controller. If you press the trigger button all the way down, it strikes this padding and the back of the board simultaneously. In a perfect world, it does. If you have dropped your controller or you have played really hard with it, all these mechanisms can get a little bit beat up and it can cause an imbalance where it's hitting against one thing and not the other. It can actually end up bending your trigger button. So first of all, look at that padding that's on the back of your controller and see what kind of shape it's in. If it looks like it's been worn away, try putting some of your own padding on top of it. Take some tape, and just put a little bubble there. If the plastic on the button is bent, you can try unbending it. If it's beyond repair, you can actually buy replacement parts off Amazon or eBay or something and just replace the button itself. I also wanna explain the magnets. There are actually magnets in these trigger buttons. They are in the shape of a disc, and as you push down that trigger, the magnetism coming from that magnet affects this little chip here and it tells it how much you're pushing on the trigger. Once again, if you've dropped the controller or you've played really hard with it, this magnet area can get really beat up. In fact, the plastic can snap and the magnet can come out and land inside the controller somewhere. So just make sure there's a magnet in each of the brackets and if one's missing, search the rest of the controller and see if you can find it. Your magnet should also be tight inside the bracket. It shouldn't be moving around. If the bracket gets damaged, the magnet can shift up and down the bracket. If the magnet did come out or it's loose and running up and down the bracket, try to tape it back into place. Or you can use glue. If the bracket area is too busted, you can once again buy replacement parts and just swap them out. From what I can see though, they don't come with new magnets. These are very special magnets, so just make sure you hold on to them. If the area with your magnet is too damaged to fix at this point, continue on with the next two methods. We're going to go further in and you'll have better access to the magnet as we disassemble the controller some more. Another thing to check is to make sure there's no foreign objects sticking to your magnet. A screw can actually come out of the controller and stick to it like this one here. You also have an opportunity at this point to clean more if you wish to do it. 
By the way, you can connect a USB cable to the controller as you're doing this and then plug it into a computer and bring up gamepadtester.com and you can test the controller as you do these steps to see if there's any improvement to your button functionality. I do have a separate tutorial video on how to use that site. So if you wanna learn more, I'll put a card on the screen and I'll put a link to it in the description. We're now going to remove more pieces to get closer to the four buttons. First, remove the front shell. All you have to do is have the buttons facing up and it should just pull right off. Now we're going to remove a piece that goes along the top. If you look closely, you'll notice there's two little tabs close to the Microsoft button. Gently pull up those two tabs and at the same time, pull up on the other side. one of these two things will happen. You'll either get a little piece that will come off or you'll get a longer piece. That long piece is actually two pieces fit together. If only the short one came off, remove the long piece that was underneath it. It's snapped into place by tabs on the far side of the trigger buttons, so just snap it right out. That part contains the LB and RB buttons, and when you press one, this curved piece moves. When it's attached to the controller, it normally presses one of these buttons right here. So if you're having trouble with LB or RB, clean those little tiny buttons. And make sure all these parts are not broken. If they are, just find a replacement. Just be careful when you're shopping and make sure that it'll actually fit your exact controller. When you do your searches, type in the model number of your controller. And if you can't find them online, just salvage the parts from an identical controller. By the way, if this sync button falls out, you can put it back in like this. It's kind of shaped like the letter L and it has a gap that's shaped like the letter L. And as always, you can clean around these buttons now that they're more exposed. There's really only two more things to consider if nothing has helped so far. One is to inspect the spring. The other is to repair the magnet mechanism if you haven't been able to get close enough to it yet. First, let's remove the little motor that's held in place by this screw here. It's a different sized screw than the other ones for some reason. I've only been able to remove it with a size 6 Torx bit. Now we can get a good look at the spring by lifting up the button. It's a very complex spring and it looks like this when it's all the way out. Take a look at your spring and see if it matches the one I have on the screen. If it looks different, it's possible that a piece of your spring has broken off and that's why it looks different. Or it could be that you have a different model and they have a different type of spring inside of them. If you don't see a spring, it's probably because it broke off and fell into the controller. So make sure you go find it if that happened. You can replace this spring, but it's very hard to get to it. There's a metal rod that goes through four different hoops and it also goes through the spring itself. Taking that metal rod out is something I've never done before, but I know people who have done it. I think it's too big of a risk, but I'll give you a little bit of advice. What you have to do is push on one side of the rod until it starts to come out on one side, and then you can take pliers and pull it the rest of the way out. The problem is it's very tight. Some people say push on it with a paper clip, it seems like that would be a little bit too flimsy, but that's just me. Maybe a large paper clip. You just have to find something that's very small and strong to push on one end of that rod. Another person said that they took pliers and squeezed the plastic around the rod to distort it enough to loosen its grip on the bar. Now bear in mind, once it's out, you have to then loop it back in there again. I imagine it's just as painful to get back in as it is to get back out. Here's some more about the magnet if you're trying to repair it at this point in the video. On my two models, that magnet is held in by a tab. Here I'll pop it out to show you what it looks like up close. If your magnet is sliding or has fallen out, tape or glue it into place. Hopefully with this much of the controller taken apart, you can do that right there. Note that the side with the little hole in it was the side that was facing downward toward the board. So that's all the methods I had today. If any of them worked for you, let me know which ones they were. In the meantime, you may be interested in a similar video regarding the analog sticks on the Xbox controller. I show how to clean those up and repair those. Have a good day, everybody.